Welcome back to the watch list. I want to focus on the jobs report, also AI and how it's going to factor into the labor market going forward. Adam Jackson's with us, co-founder of Brain Trust, and Mark Hammer, senior economic analyst at Bankrate.com. Thank you both for being with us. So let's just start with the basics. Mark, I'll start with you with this jobs report. Look, you came in later that with the non-farm payrolls and 175 and the uh, 39 and so on. But is there was there a standout part of the story to you going forward? I think it's consistent, good to see you, Nicole, with a theme that we've seen emerging for some time now, and that is moderation in the economy and within the employment part of the equation, a better alignment between supply and demand. We had Chairman Jerome Powell tell us this week that he still believes the demand for labor exceeds the supply, uh, but it does appear that those things are still coming into better balance. And so, as you see, all these factors sort of arguing against the job market as a source of inflation. Obviously, we're seeing lower yields as we end the week, and obviously, uh, equities investors are celebrating that. So I think there's a lot to like here. And in the meantime, Adam, I, I want to get to how AI may change the landscape. But what was your takeaway from today and this week? Look, we got Jolt, we got ADP. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, the, you know, the job market seems strong in every sector except tech. Uh, we're still seeing big layoffs from big companies. I think the jobs report said we added about 7,000. It's relatively flat. but. This is a story about uh, AI being really disruptive in the tech knowledge worker space. And so with that, you know, when when they brought in the tractor, all the farmers were upset, right? Because now their jobs were gone. Uh, but then new jobs are created, right? So where do we stand on the AI impact on the labor market going forward? What do you think? How could the landscape change, maybe in a big way or a smaller way? Yeah, look, I'm still a believer that AI will, will have a net positive effect on job creation over time, but the water's choppy here for the next year or two or so. We're, we're seeing like, I mean, Brain Trust, for instance, just on Monday launched an AI recruiter. We call it AIR, and it's literally an AI job recruiter. It does the interviews for you. And so, you know, we've had a lot of conversations uh, on public threads that where recruiters are feeling like, you know, maybe this is a threat to their job. And yeah, I, I don't think it is. I think AI is meant to replace these repetitive tasks that humans don't like doing and frankly aren't as good at doing as machines. And so you bring in an AI recruiter and that makes a an HR team at a big company freeze their time up to build culture, to, to help people upskill, to, to really enrich the company instead of sitting there doing hundreds of video screens with candidates all day long. So it, it will create new and different jobs. I mean, we employ people training these AIs, for instance. Yeah, and just quickly, um, Adam, before I let you go on this particular topic, um, when we talk, you said in the long term, you think that'll be a net positive for jobs. What kind of jobs, other than maybe recruiting and doing the interviews, like you said, what other kind of jobs may be a little iffy or uh, challenged now? Think about any knowledge worker job where there's a lot of repetition and it's relatively easy to tell if the job's being done well or not, right? Like in a recruiter's case, are you hiring good people who are good employees and stay at the company, yes or no, right? And right. so there, there are jobs that, you know, in, in for instance, like with the recruiter role, uh, or think about accountants, you know, paralegals, people doing repetitive things that are deterministic. Those are jobs that are better suited for AI, and then let, it frees humans up to be more creative and do more creative problem solving, and you know, build the company, it, it, it help the the staff do things yeah. that they're struggling with. When we look at um, the different areas of job growth, right, we still see the government jobs and hospitality and leisure and things like that. But I would say they, they've been telling the college students the last decade or so, in the last five years in particular, to go with, um, you know, all things AI and uh, data and statistics and all that. Is that still the way to go? Or maybe they'll just get uh, wiped out by AI and maybe they should be doing something else. Mark, where do you think uh, these graduates and college students are headed? Well, I think, first of all, uh, we looked at the breadth of the economy and the distribution of employment within this latest report was pretty wide. 
uh, where it really faltered for a change was in government, and that's probably healthy to have the private sector doing the heavy lifting. Listen, we have an aging population, greater demand uh, for health care, and we had health care uh, shouldering a bit of the job creation burden here. Uh, I also think that people who, and we're thinking about some of the college graduates who are in the class of 2024, but also those who will be entering in the fall, uh, there does need to be some consideration about blending opportunity and capability. We need artists. We need physicians. We need engineers. We need people to train the robots going forward. So right now, I'd say yeah. there's plenty of opportunity out there, understanding yeah. that there are going to be structural changes and cyclical changes along the way. Yeah. Where do we stand, Mark, quickly on wages versus inflation? We have wages outpacing inflation, so is that something to celebrate? And that helps our Federal Reserve officials to breathe a sigh of relief that the job market is not itself contributing to wage inflation. Yeah. It's great to see you both, Adam and Mark. Thank you both very much. Adam Jackson at Brain Trust and Mark Hamrick, bankrate.com. Thank you.